system. I can imagine that's actually going to stay there. There's no reason it really wouldn't be. Shen, again, banned out against Nomad Gaming. The real answer they had when they beat Elite was they they answered the split push with Globals. And they were um, able to do that to some extent this past game, but it wasn't quite enough against the likes of a Kasten who was just blowing people up so quickly, especially with game base still on that Vladimir, was just putting so much pressure down, getting 1v several other people, multi-man kills, and <laughs> just kept him so far ahead in that game. Ton of farm advantage, Twisted Fate actually being banned there, so both those big globals taken down right away. They do not want anything to contest with Gambit split pushing at all. Yeah, Vladimir and Oriana being banned out now from Nomad Gaming. So we have seen the Oriana coming out before from ECR, and we do know the power of Gambay's Vladimir, so that's going to be gone. Trendemir also being banned out here. So a lot of his split pushers are left open, or sorry, left closed out now. So I'm a little bit curious about what Gambit is going to decide to do and what the rest of his team is going to kind of work around with this. I can imagine... And only because he's actually done this before is the Teemo. Teemo? Yeah. The Teemo, the, Teemo, <laughs> the, the Teemo was the first one he ran, I believe, and he won that so hard against, I believe it was a Malphite. Yes. So <laughs> just destroying that lane 1v1. Actually, he went like the likes of an AD slash Bruiser Teemo build. A little bit of on hit in there with the even the Spirit of the Elder Lizard there just to get extra damage. Even from the Mushrooms, which surprisingly do knock the Elder Lizard. Anyway, you see it's still being covered over here first, so not quite picking up the split pusher for Ganbei yet, but it does leave the field open. Not going to quite reveal that strategy yet. And they could even just... Well, I, I would say they're going to try a different strategy now, try something different that's not quite as predictable, but um, they're, they still banned out the global, so I can imagine they're still going to go for that strategy. So I'm locked in as the first support and it's a fairly standard support pickup, we'd say. There's not really anything too surprising about that. Twitch being hovered over here for a Secretic. And again, it's something we've seen all day today. It's a bunch of Twitches. It's not... Yeah, uh, Twitch being locked in here. Same with Jarvan, actually. We haven't been seeing a lot of Jarvan today. Jarvan's probably one of the more popular jungles in our tournament. But we haven't been seeing a whole lot of him today, now that I think about it. I think we've only had him one or two games. I could be wrong on that, but no, Jarvan being picked up now for Fad, 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 for Fad, and now Hecarim being hovered over for Junkie. Yeah, we just call him Fad. It's a little bit of a complicated name, but yeah, again, one another Twitch. I, I'd say it's a, a probably approaching a hundred percent pick rate here so far in the tournament, at least today. I, I can't recall really any game that hasn't had a Twitch in it yet. Uh, again, Final Hunt hovering over that Syndra. We've already seen him on, but that was the, when he picked Syndra, that was the game they lost with. He's still doing what Syndra does. He bursts targets one at a time, but as the game goes on, it's a little bit harder for him to do that, uh, especially with something like a Lulu. Oh, never mind. The Kasten sought out for the Syndra, so I'm going to stop talking about Syndra. <laughs> Kasten picked up there for Final Hunt, just like last game. Yeah, so Kassadin has been picked up for a final hunt now, so kind of getting that snowball-y mid laner here, but again, we do know that Nomad is pretty notorious for doing their lane swap, so we'll see what they decide to do. Nami being hovered over, one of our favorite supports that we also see in this tournament, but we haven't been seeing a lot of her lately, being hovered over, and then Kennen being locked in for Secretic. Now this is it. Okay, yeah, so yeah, so we are going to be seeing a top lane Kennen. For some reason, I thought Secretic was locking AD carry Kennen. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually not entirely sure what, where that cannon is going quite yet. I was almost expecting the Jace to get locked in just because <clears throat> generally AD champions go so well against the Kassadin. And one thing that Elite is also looking to do this game, just like they did last game, they're trying to force the lane swap in Ganbei's favor. They, they um, Nomad Gaming actually went trying to go 2v1 against the Kassadin last game. It ended up giving Ganbei just a huge 1v1, everything he wanted out of that. He got the turret, he got the pressure, he got so much of a farm advantage, and uh, forced what his lane opponent there, which was Norm in the beginning, just completely out of lane, out-sustained him, out-poked him, did everything, and he was free to do whatever he wanted pretty much all through the laning phase. And it's, again, back to the pick your poison, Nomad. Which one do you want to deny? Still no split pusher picked quite here for Gambe. He's still 
seconds. Ten seconds to decide who he wants. Oh my gosh. Ganbe locking in the Teemo. <laughs> so I'm sorry to say, but he is doing it. He is going to be picking that Teemo. And we are going to be seeing him split pushing once again. Meanwhile, JWN got access to his Corky. So he is back on his favorite AD carry. So we are seeing... What the game we are seeing the champion that made Ganbei already famous in our tournaments, the Teemo, and we're seeing JDOM back on his favorite AD carry with a Sona. So this is a really strong team coming out so far for for uh Oh man, now I'm pulling up a blink again. <laughs> the Elite Crew crew reborn. Whereas Nomad Gaming has really got their team fight composition working again here. We've got the same team fight composition we've been seeing a lot of. We've got the Cannon Ultimate, we got the Jervan Ultimate, we got the Nami Ultimate, and we got the Twitch Ultimate. The four of them combined are going to rip through teams, whereas Ari is going to be sitting back, kind of in the back lines, using the Orb of Deception to kind of poke with the Spirit or spirit Rush to kind of do uh, some repositioning. Yeah, and again, it, it surprises me that the Jace was not locked in there for Norn, because, again, AD champions do so well against Kasten, it would have eliminated the choice of the pick your poison. Who do you want to deny more? The Jace can 1v1 shut down Kasten so early in the game, and then it just leaves the lane swap free to go against Ganbei, especially on Teemo. Teemo is not, even though he is ranged, he does not fare well at all in a 1v2 situation. It, the best he hopes for is to at least get some last hits with the Blinding Dart or the likes of the <clears throat> the Poison, which I forget what it's called now, actually. I'm just going to call it Poison. Everyone calls it Poison. The... Toxic shots. I think it's okay. uh, I think it's venomous. I, you know, this is like, I'm gonna go check this out. Okay, go check. <clears throat> deadly venom. There you go. It's no, deadly no, venom. deadly venom is Twitch's poison. I'm looking at Timo. Oh, Timo. Oh, yeah, toxic shot. I believe is is what it's called. Yeah, yeah it should toxic be toxic shot. shot. Yeah, my mistake. <laughs> anyway, but again, he isn't. He's like one of those that doesn't fare well in the one v two situation. Now against the cannon, I actually kind of somewhat like Squishy's pick into this because. It's not someone that's very, um, like, very auto-attack reliant. He does have a little bit of auto-attack uh, dependency. If he can get the another Mark of the Storm off of his, um, I believe it's the passive on... Okay, no, sorry. I forget which ability it's tied to. It gets, like, it's, like, every fourth or fifth attack. The... That's his W, Electrical Search. Electrical Search, that's it. Sorry. Again, you can yeah. tell I don't play Kennen. I know it's yeah. a passive on one ability. That's it. <laughs> But again, it's not all attacker reliant, so the blind isn't very useful in that lane for Ganbei. Really always going to do... And again, I, I'm eager to see where he ends up building this Teemo, because Teemo as a champion is just so versatile in whatever he can build. Normally you see AP Teemos just making their shrooms do all the damage, getting a little bit of burst of the blinding dart, but that's really it. And last time he built like the likes of a Blade of the Burden King, he was going a bit of AD build, just dueling potential against his lane opponent, and that's how he won the lane. We'll see where he goes with this because he's against someone who can actually, um, I believe, the auto attacks from Squishy would outrange Ganbei's auto attacks. So he can get a bit some easier harass in there, get some thundering shurikens down, and keep him back and actually out wave clear Ganbei with the lightning rush and the. Um, I already forgot the ability name. Electrical surge. Electrical surge. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the extra so. wave clear does go as squishy, at least in the early game. Uh, mushrooms can be used to AoE wave clear, but it's not the best use for them. Diambe will want to instead use those just to keep a big safety net around him in laning phase, or at least towards the end of laning phase as the mid game rolls around. But I can imagine that really squishy is going to have the upper hand in this laning phase just because he can at least get the wave clear down on Gambe and keep him back as much as possible. Yeah, so this is going to be a really interesting lane to see in the top lane. They did pick a fairly decent champion to go against a Teemo. They did pick that cannon. So Gambe actually picked into the cannon here. So we're going to assume he knows what he's doing. All of his other split pushers that I believe we have seen him play have been banned out. So Teemo was kind of the last resort that was like they didn't want to let the other picks go through. They didn't want to let that Orianna go through because we have seen um, uh, a final burst playing on that Orianna and absolutely devastating. Especially, he's, he's landed a lot of those clutch shockwaves that have won them game. So, this is going to be really interesting. So, we are going to be getting into the loading screen here, guys. It's time for the traditional 
skin intimidation factor. I can't see them yet. I'm still on black screen. <laughs> right, I'm working on. I'm working on. I got this. I, I see, got. This. I see an arcade skin, an Ar 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 arcade Sona, Artigops Kennen, Earthfighter Corky, Commando Jarvin, and uh, Gangster Twitch. So it does go over to Nomad Gaming, and Gambi, you disappoint me. You cannot play Teemo if you don't have a Teemo skin. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Just a little bit of a side note while we're waiting for some loading. I think my friend is watching the stream. I don't think so, but he he's a very avid Teemo player. And he always asks us what Teemo skin he wants to play before the game starts. And he only has he owns every single one but one that you can't get anymore. And Happy Elf Teemo. And so we always bug him every time we play a game to make him pick Happy Elf Teemo. And he actually rage quit on us, I believe, once because of it. <laughs> Yeah. So, you so cannot Matt, if you're in the stream, I'm sorry, but you need to get that skin. Happy Elf Teemo. <laughs> yeah, it does go over to the Nomad Gaming. Um, actually, if you, yeah, I'm not even gonna bother counting extra skins. It'll it'll go. I don't know. Earthfighter, Corky, and Arcade Sona both are pretty special skins. You could call it even if you want, but it is two to three. I don't know. Oh, come you. on, come on. You were, you were giving like specialty to just some of the random skins earlier. Let, let's well, get more friends for okay, Fine. Arcade Sona, in my opinion, is the best Sona skin. So I'll, I'll at least give it... I'll, I'll call it even, at least. Okay. It's, it's even the skin intimidation factor. So teams are even on the last game here. But this is it, guys. We are going to be going into the last game of the day. This is the final match. There is no more matches after this. Whoever wins this takes the title for this week for the League of Legends Amateur Open. Nomad Gaming. Sorry, no, it's the other way around. Uh, how does, what is the team name again? I always call them CRE or whatever. Elite Crew Reborn in the blue corner and Nomad Gaming in the red corner. There we go, Elite on the blue. I'll have to keep that in mind. So, we are getting some pretty typical starts coming out here. Everybody kind of playing defensive around the river. Ponzer Tank going a little bit aggressive here, looking like he wants to get a ward down over into the red bush, but kind of just hovering back and forth. Squishy is here with the, in the mid lane as well to kind of go in. They are playing a little bit aggressive here. Ponzer does manage to get that ward down right in front of the red buff and able to back away safely from that. Yeah, same red buff spot they ended up warding in game one, so that's... Definitely something they want to keep their eye on and just keep their eye on Junkie as he goes through his jungle. Um, one thing I do want to point out, this is not actually the last game of the day. We do have actually a staff versus whoever the winner of this game is. So uh, we have a, our own staff team here built up among our staff. I believe Muddy Mudkip is actually a part of it. So Yeah, Muddy will be playing this week. The guy who owns and runs this thing will be playing. So... They are going to be getting some pretty stupid starts. But yes, we will be playing. Well, I won't be playing personally, but we will have our cast playing in a game uh, versing the winners of the tournament. Last week, we did come out on top. League Amateur staff did defeat Nomad Gaming last week's champion. So we'll see how that goes this week. Yep. Elite Crew Reborn looking to take their own spot in the championship Walt Hall of Fame, whatever we have. Oh, the Amateur Open. And yeah. <laughs> Nomad Gaming was actually last week's, as you said, um, who took down, it, before the series, they actually did take down Sunbeam Dream Team, who was the champion from the week before. They um, both ended up going against each other in the first round from yesterday, first round of the winner's bracket. So, a little bit of a rematch there that Nomad won. A little bit of damage going back and forth to the spot lane, though. Look at this. Yeah, a lot of damage going down. Barrier already being popped down here. Voodoo is still going super aggressive. Forced to flash away though. Ignite is going down here. Pulse are taking down extremely low. GD we will be able to pick up first blood on that kill. Lots of baiting going down there. Voodoo doing a really good job of knowing exactly when to back out of there. Yeah, that was just very close. Both the supports are taking low. Oh, wow. Oh, but meanwhile, <laughs> okay. no, he ex <laughs> looks like, did he level up Valkyrie there? No, he did. He actually leveled up Gatling Gun. So the surprise burst damage coming down. JW mid picking up a quick second kill. So already two to zero in this bot lane. And now in mid lane, lots. Oh my gosh, a lot of action going on. Final one getting a little bit of damage. Or Ignite going down. Looks like he's going to be dropping out to the Ignite in just a moment. GG Norm will be able to pick that up. Looks like Junkie actually popped Ghost, looking to try and help out his friend. Did end up burning it. Wasn't able to save him. So Junkie has burned Ghost as well. Yeah, and Gamey actually already in this top lane now, establishing dominance. Look at where Squishy's health is. It's already down to about. Two thirds just from auto attack damage alone from Teemo. Actually, it ended up JWN flashed in with a phosphorus bomb Gatling gun and just bursted down what was just a little bit that was already left of Secret X health. 
That's now a 2 and 0 Corky here at 3 minutes. And is a huge advantage already. Building almost toward that, um, uh, sorry, build on our Cutlass. And yeah, already here at 3 minutes. Big advantage in that lane. A lot of lifesteal already available for him. Just a couple of potions picked up after both of the bot laners back. A lot of aggression going down here in the mid lane, actually. Junkie getting caught out here, getting knocked up. Fat able to pick up another kill there. Getting charmed down by GG. But meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Sigurdik actually managed to pick up a kill onto Voodoo there while Voodoo was by himself as J uh, sorry, JWN was heading on his way back. Now JWN in a little bit of a tricky position here. Does manage to dodge the bubble. Now going into aggression on Sigurdik. Able to actually survive this 1v2 very well, doing a lot of damage. Eventually Valkyrie out of there just to play it safe. Yeah, he's just burning everything he has just to try to get something even more out of this lane. Secretic, although he did get that one kill, he actually hasn't bought off the kill gold uh, like JWN has. Looking to get something. Looking to land bubble. bubble actually landed out on the JWN. A lot of aggression to expend will pick that up. So now we have two for two in the bottom lane now. 2-1 on each of the 80 carries. This is just huge in the beginning of the game. The first blood bonus did go to JWN, however, so he is at least a little bit ahead in this matchup. If only by a little. He is ahead. But he's actually about to lose a lot of experience to this turret. It'll all be absorbed by Voodoo by the time JWN can get back. Yeah, so definitely coming out more on top for Secret of getting a lot more aggression. Actually, another bubble going down onto Voodoo there. They got a whole lot of damage. Expunge will pick up another kill underneath the turret. That is a lot of gold in the Twitch. He's sitting at about 1,600 after all that. Meanwhile, the top lane, Squishy is actually just continuing to lose this lane to uh, Ganbei. Ganbei on the Teemo just putting out so much 1v1 pressure, forcing Fad to come up and just try to help defend this turret. So none of the experience goes to waste. Ganbei doesn't even try to turret dive on the Junkie meanwhile, down on the bottom lane. You're trying to get some aggression down. Secretic actually managing to get the invincible here, but Foster's Bump does manage to land. They do have vision on him, but he is forced to flash away. No, he didn't flash away. He actually managed to get away. A great bubble landing there, forcing Junkie to back away from that. Yeah, if he kept the flash up from the earlier engagement. Earlier, he only popped his barrier, didn't quite flash away after JWN flashed in. Again, he was cut out very well by surprise on his first death. Or his only death, I suppose. But it, it he didn't even have time to flash, so he still had it up there and wanted to keep it up for the time being. And he sh should be safe in this lane. Gank, the gank from uh, Junkie didn't really get much out of it there. Yeah, sorry, no, he did manage to get in there. did actually manage to just get a little bit of health. They did force Secret Dick to get back. Help, uh, help JW and get a little bit of farm, but overall, no, not really anything major coming out of that at that moment. So, did help JW and catch back up in farm, but you do have to now look at the items. Twitch has now come back with a BF sword on Secret Dick. JW and only has got his Vamp Scepter and another Long Sword. He looks like he's just more intent on building into that Bilge Water over anything else. Yeah, a little bit of more harass going down the side. A lot of aggression off to the top lane here, Vengeful, or Slicing Maelstrom going down. Gabe trying to do his best to stay alive here, but now Hecarim is joining the fray, forcing him to go in. Swishy doing his best to kite around here. Hecarim does not have red buff. Squishy might be able to get away from here, forcing Flash away from Junkie. Junkie isn't able to catch up, and Squishy is able to get away from that safely. Both of the top laners just forced everything out of themselves in that fight, and the Ghost off of Junkie as well, trying to pick that up. But really nothing else on down. Oh wow, Punster Tank taking very low in this bottom lane. One more auto. Oh, they oh he does actually it. fall down. Now Secret Dick in a little bit of a dangerous position. Exhaust did go down here, forced to flash away, finally burning that summoner spell just to keep himself safe. Yeah, Expunge wasn't quite available again after that. He used it in a little bit of a, um, a little bit of harass before that. Uh, one thing I want to point out about this top lane, at least until, or I was going to point it out until, um, Squishy was forced to back off there, is that Squishy was actually not at much of a CS disadvantage before, unlike um, how he was, I believe. Um, I, I want to say it was actually Nomad Gaming. No, never mind. Uh, anyway, it's not quite the CS disadvantage that um, Gambe has put his lane opponents at in the past on Teemo, and it's at least keeping Squishy somewhat in this game. He's only at 8 down right now. Eating a lot of harass again, back from just the blinding darts and the uh, toxic shot with auto attacks. Both laners actually opting to buy double Dorns and boots at this point. Oh, go Norm's caught out. Oh, yeah, he's Norm actually out. getting caught out in the enemy jungle, trying to use that spirit rush to get away, but the ignite will finish him off. Now, the fad in a little bit of a tricky situation here. Not in the best place he wants to be. Getting a little bit caught out here by JWN. Does use that Bilgewater Cutlass to get the slowdown, but the bubble will zone him away from that, and Jarvan is able to run away from that safely.
That's one thing I, I I'm always baffled by the builds on this Elite Crew Reborn team, especially JWN in particular. Is just always rushing that build wire cutlass. He always is able to use the active on that item, and he just tries to win lane with that item. Now, meanwhile, the top lane game, Ganbei actually getting a little bit hit by that slicing maelstrom once again, though. But just take it, trading those blows. Squishy actually missing a couple of auto attacks or because of the blind and hesitating on his auto attacks. And now we actually see a lot of movement heading up towards the top lane here. Fad is actually in a little bit of a dangerous position, was walking over Ward. Fido is actually catching on to him. It's, it looks like he has nowhere to run and will be dropped down over to Junkie. Yeah, the Silence and the Terrifier both just delayed his ability to EQ combo slide out of there. Another kill. It's actually 5-5 five to five kills even. Only a 100 gold disadvantage between the teams right now and it's really even overall. This is almost surprising because it looks like Elite Crew Reborn is just winning all their lane matchups. Well, obviously, except for mid, it is already. Well, now at the happen. bottom lane, a lot of aggression going down. Once again, Spray and Prey being forced to use your Flash coming away from uh, from eh, from Voodoo here just to keep himself safe. We'll be back in away from that, and now, yeah, everybody's going to walk away just fine from that. Ari now clearing out a ward over by the Dragon Pit. Going to be heading back over there. Cassidy floating around here, checking to see where Ari is. Maybe hoping to get a pick off it. No, everybody's heading back over to their lane safely. I'm again just so amazed at how well, how aggressive JWN is being. Even when he's outnumbered 1v2 in lane, he's just, he does not hesitate to go in. But he is actually low on mana. If he's forced to Valkyrie away right now, he will actually flash away from that too. Just from the ultimate from Nami, a flash down. That's definitely yeah. a trade Nomad is willing to take. Yeah, very scary threat. Tidal wave able to knock up and then get a slowdown on people. The giant AoE just, you know, it's pretty scary when you think about it. A giant tidal wave hitting towards you. I'm sure you would want to run too. Meanwhile, the top lane, more trading blows going down here. Squishy actually taken down very low. Gambit doing his best to catch up here. Squishy is forced to use that lightning rush to get away from that just to be safe. And look what Gambit actually rushed as the first item. He got, Merc he got the Mercury Treads. I'm sorry, maybe on the mid lane here, final hunt taking down a lot of damage, but doesn't look like Spirit Rush. No, Spirit Rush was up, but doesn't look like he's interested in diving final hunt here. Does look like no, he does have vision where Junkie is, so he doesn't look like he wanted to go too aggressive there. Junkie is walking over that ward, and Norm does know he is there. So Ping's going down. Junkie is aware that now he has been spotted and is walking away from that gank. Yeah, and in the bot lane, it looks like Fad's looking for something here, but if he goes any closer, if he tries to go in that second bush, he is going to be spotted by a ward. And Punzer knows this. He's been eating some auto. A lot of aggression after. going down here now. Secret Dick popping down his ambush just to stay safe. Fab didn't look like he was really interested in going in there, and they are going to back away from that. Yeah, that's just... it's Both teams are looking to make something else happen. The gold is so even right now. It doesn't feel like it in certain lane matchups. Really, mid lane is the only one really winning out right now for Nomad. There's a bit of a CS advantage in bot lane for Secret Dick, but it's not really enough at the moment. And... I mean, he, the bot lane AD carries are actually even in kills, but the CS difference is only about five. The mid lane and the top lane are the two big difference makers, and because they're on opposite teams where the advantages are, it's really evening out the game. Uh, a lot of action going down onto the mid lane here. Ghost has actually been used on the junkie here. Also, the shell is knocking Ari back, but Ignite going down on the final burst, turning the kill around here. GG North forcing the flash away here, living with just a little bit of health. 29 health. Junkie trying to go in, but the, the turret shell will drop him down. Double kill going down for Norm. Extremely well played. Three kills all across the map there for Nomad Gaming. They're going to get this top turret potentially here. They do have the Siege minion. It's dropping very fast though, and the turret might not go down. Very well played in the mid lane though. But everything was thrown at that Teemo, and they just barely got away with Squishy alive there at the end of that. They should be able to finish off this turn. They have another wave of minions, and especially with the eight, uh, attack speed from Jarvan, that is the first turn of the game going down for Nomad Gaming. Yeah, they are going to be able to pick up that kill first turn of the game, going over to Nomad there. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Looking really good actually now for Nomad. That little turnaround that Norm managed to pull off in the mid lane was extremely good. Actually getting another tower down in the bot lane, so you could managing to pull that one out. And now looks like they're gonna be trying to rotate over towards mid or dragon by the looks of it. Yeah, they don't quite have the jungler available in the area yet to smite that away. But neither does Elite, actually. They could start with this track and then have Jarvan come around just in time to smite it away, but they're not gonna start it up quite yet. They only have a pink ward. They're standing right in vision of Elite crew. They know they're trying to set up for this dragon, but 
Nothing is going down. And with all the kills and the two turrets now, what we saw was a 100 gold advantage is now about a two and a half thousand gold advantage. Voodoo actually getting advantage. a little bit caught out here, but JW is here to turn things around. Crescendo going down. Secret getting dropped down very low here, but the poison damage is doing a lot of here. The exhaust going down onto Secret, but he will drop down to the ignite. Now Poets are in a little bit of trouble here. Final actually flashing in, getting the Null Spear off to pick up the kill. Now turning down over towards Norm. Norm is in a little bit of trouble here. Spirit Rush is available in a couple seconds, but it doesn't look like it's going to be up just in time. He does manage to retreat to his turret safely though and get away from that gank fight. Oh, but he's actually really low. Rift Wall coming in from behind, doing enough damage to finish it off. Knock up coming down for Fad. Now Fad is on a little bit of a triple tr uh, tricky spot here, taking a huge amount of burst damage from that Null Spear, and he will be dropped down. JDL and picking up another kill. And what I just mentioned about a gold lead, forget it. It's back to yeah. about 700. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably one of the most action-packed games we've ever seen. Right from the get-go, we've had things going on, and the gold lead just keeps going back and forth over and over and over again. Actually, a lot of aggression going down onto top. Nope, never mind. I thought I thought Squishy was going to be trying to go in for that aggression onto Ganbei, but does actually back away from that one. And farm game does continue on once again. Looks like Nomad aren't, or sorry, not Nomad, Elite are going to be going in for this dragon. Now, we'll be able to pick up the first dragon in the game. Nami is hanging around the side. Their opponents are tank ready to try and do some tidal wave actually going down across here. Knocking up Junkie. Not quite enough damage to finish it off, though. They do manage to finish it off by themselves. Junkie actually using Onslaught of Shadows over the wall just to secure his escape. So, he did end up burning his ultimate. Yeah, that is an ultimate now. It's not the most significant of cooldown. It's only about 93 seconds at level 1. And that is with a little bit of cooldown reduction in there from blue buff, which he thankfully had, so it'll be up even quicker after that. In this top lane, we see again Squishy just eating so much harass. He was actually, during that entire dragon fight, he was stepping on a couple of mushrooms just... Ben, just um, slicing right. Maelstrom actually going down, trying his best to defend the turret. Gambe is like, go for it. I don't really care, your turret is mine. Does manage to pick up the turret. Squishy has now lost the turret and his ultimate. It just shows how well Gambe knows these matchups he's in. Now that uh, it looks like uh, Fad stepping out of Sherm, that gank is absolutely no <laughs> surprise. This, this is point. why Teemo is so frustrating. Just the amount of damage he took from that shroom there was pretty good. And he actually isn't allowed, able to gank that now because of those shrooms. Teemo just one of those incredibly infuriating champions to play against. Just really hard to get any kind of counterplay against them sometimes. And another shroom. <laughs> <laughs> that squishy take it down to about half health now. Actually, let's see how squishy much is too squishy. <laughs> Gambi actually good. only has 13 AP, so he doesn't have a whole lot of damage there. The base damage on the shrooms is fairly high though, 325 at level two, so it is doing quite a fair bit of damage. And again, he's opting for the Blade of the Ruined King first on the Teemo. And it's great because it works just well into Squishy's build, brushing the Zonias first against him. And a pause. First of the game. You have the pause coming out. Uh, I am before Squishy is lagging again. <laughs> uh, we can. Uh, they haven't actually said that in the chat yet, but we can imagine that's what the issue is. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, again, it just plays into Squishy's build because it's going to be physical damage he's working against. Having the Zonia's rush is going to be so helpful in that lane matchup. But, there, again, there's not really any AP on the cannon yet, so he doesn't really have a whole lot of damage to try to go back against his lane opponent. Especially, again, I pointed out the Merc Treads earlier before some action went down, but that's just so useful against Kennen, who is always trying to get little mini stuns out, and... The, it, the stun that already doesn't last that long is going to even be even shorter now because of those Merc Treads. It gives Yanbei such a huge advantage in the 1v1 situation that he can't really be locked down, at least not early game until the rest of the team start coming around. But then again, the only real um, Mercury, like the only crowd control in the uh, so far on Nomad's team that is able to be reduced by tenacity is the bubble, the taunt, and the stun. And there's a couple slows here and there, but that's really it. The rest are just knockups. So the Mercury Treads are really not doing anything except in that lane matchup for now. Yeah, but as we do know, he doesn't really like to leave the lane. Actually, also the Shadows going in. Does miss everybody. Same with the Tidal Wave. Not really managing to hit anybody. Cassidy trying his best. Flash Crescendo going in. Norm dropping down. Melting almost instantly. Now Fat taking a lot of damage. Forced to retreat down to his turret. The burst damage coming down is insane right now. Yeah, that all happened with Secret Dick gone. They couldn't really throw a whole lot of damage back, especially with Norm being the first caught out there. It should be actually the first mid turret down for 
elite here, but no, the minions are gone. They got down about a third of its health. But then the top lane, again, the 1v1 is just so strong. Gambay level up on Squishy, putting down so much damage on him. 1v1 potential is just way too strong for this Teemo right now. He doesn't even have a full completed item yet. He just has some Mercury Treads with a little bit of like a tenacity and magic resist against Squishy, and it's all he needs right now. Yeah, that tenacity is actually helping him more in trades than just the magic resistance. Because when the stun goes down, it lasts less time and it lets doesn't let Kennen get as many auto attacks as he'd like off onto Ganbe. And that lets Kennen or sorry, lets Ganbe do even more auto attack damage because the stun isn't lasting as long. So it's doing more than just reducing the tenacity, it's helping him one trades in terms of more than just losing uh, magic damage. Yeah, and he's very close to that Zonia's right now. He went back for Needle Seal Large Rod, but he's actually about 50 gold off the combined cost for his Zonia's. You can imagine he'd just go back very quickly. Actually ends up buying another uh, Amplifying Tome with that gold instead, so... Going back to lane with that, a lot more AP under his belt. He has a lot more trade potential against Ganbei. Not quite as much uh, defensive there as he had before, but he actually has a lot more AP. Making Ganbei eat a couple turret shots, but <laughs> the blind is actually stopping the... Uh, Electrical surge from doing a whole lot of damage on him. Actually, uh, Actually have a lot of movement going coming up lane. to the top lane here. Bad coming out, but he does hit a shroom. But he does realize he is in a little bit of trouble here. Cataclysm going down. Combatant with the slicing maelstrom. Charm Char missing. Deathfire grass going down. They're pulling everything on Gambit here, doing their best to get away. Really get away. He actually only has a little bit of HP left. No, the fox farms will finish him off. But almost everything was burnt. Three ultimates being used just to finish off Gambit. Just to finish off a Teemo, everything was thrown at him right there. And it gives Elite complete control of this bot lane after JW and 1v1 and just bursted down Secret Tick. This is now the fourth turret for Elite and they're just controlling the math again because so much attention is drawn onto Ganbait. Uh, on a Teemo. A Teemo. The global taunt is OP. A Teemo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Fourth turret going down there for Elite. It is now a... 4,000 gold advantage to them. They were down three earlier, but they were just able to swing that right back around. Here at 19 minutes, 4,000 isn't the biggest in the world, but it does mean something. And it looks like, uh, no, face check doesn't end up horribly going wrong like it was about to. <laughs> <laughs> we finally yeah, everybody, see Everybody safely returning to their lane. JW and hanging around the side, you're just kind of poking it up. The rest of his team is here now to join the fray. And actually looks like Ganbei has decided to leave the top lane. Yeah, finally, he's rejoining his team in this. All members of both teams are here in the mid lane, or at least around the area, trying to get some vision control. Now, hands are, uh, not hands, the, the Ponzer tank is, has an oracles on him. <laughs> finally getting some vision control around the area. Food doesn't quite have his own yet. I can imagine he would go back and buy that relatively soon, at least to compete with that. No, he buys boots and a pink word. Uh, it's something. Blade of the Runner King and Infinity Edge finished for Corky here recently. One buy and two items. That's quite a big advantage right there. Those are walking right over the mushroom with the oracles of his own. Eh, not the best reaction in the world on that, but at least he has his own heal to get that harass damage back. Ganve is sitting alone here um, against an oracle Nami. Uh, and the rest of his team is here to knock up, does come down, Tidal Wave, Combo Wave, Voodoo getting a lot of damage, Revenge Slicing Maelstrom doing huge amounts of damage, Gambe hanging around the side here, trying to do as much damage as he can though, actually doing a pretty good job of cleaning this up, Final Hunt's coming around from the side here, Fad forced to flash away, but the Rift Walk over will finish him off, and that was a very, very, very fast ace coming down from Elite. What just happened? <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that that was, bit, that, like you said, that's extremely quickly... Gambe now actually soloing the dragon. He has the life steal with Blade of the Room King to do it. And I, I want to comment on what happened in the fight, but I couldn't tell. It went well, down what so actually fast. ended up happening is Teemo was hanging out in that bush. So Gambe was sitting there, and then the engagement happened. So the knock up and the tidal wave happened. And so everybody moved forward, and the backline came in, and it gave Gambe access to just assassinate the backline. So we managed to. To assassinate the pack line, kill them off really quickly, and then Final came in from behind and helped him finish that off, and then the rest of the fight just kind of finished off like that. One thing I did notice that Gambe was actually doing the fight, he actually zoned away Secret Tick. All he did was like he let the burst AoE damage go through onto him, and then he used the only damage he actually put on Secret Tick after all the ultimates went down was the Blade of the Ruin King active. He used that, and Secret Tick just ran. 
Spray and Pray was doing almost nothing in that fight. No damage has gone down. Secret Dick was taken solo and not really able yeah, to Yeah, actually in a little bit of trouble there. down here in his bot lane again. I feel like he's actually just gonna go stealth in that lane. No, actually now he's getting a little bit of trouble. I'm gonna get hit with the bubble here. Garbage Deception being used all but in with the Spirit Rush and the Death Fire grab. And Gambe is one dead little Teemo. Yeah. Oh, but now actually they're gonna get caught out in the jungle here. Voodoo trying to take out that ward. And it looks like, no, they will be able to disengage from that. The rest of the team is here to try and support that. Make sure no hard engagements come down. The flash slashing Maelstrom is almost up here for... Oh, but Ghost is actually being used! Shadow of Onslaught be going down! Tidal Wave locking people down! Joram has nowhere to go! Spirit Dash is already used! Squishy is almost nowhere to go! Joram would drop down immediately! Squishy doing his best to do as much damage as he can here! Doesn't have to Zonia! Zonia's at the perfect time keeping us up alive here! Now having a little bit of a duel here! Wilman should be cleaned up though! And now over on the side, Fat is doing his best to fight whoever he can! Looks like they're just kind of trading off. Okay, I think Fat actually disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> Fat actually <laughs> disconnected. Looked like they were having a little bit of an auto attack fight, but no. It did disconnect. Final Ant is backing away. I think they're going to let him live after that. And that was kind of a little bit of an unfortunate timing that Fatishu had to disconnect at that point. It did end up hurting their team fight just a little bit at that point. Yeah, I can't even tell right now because there's just a pause there. I'm not even sure the Cataclysm was used in that fight. It, I believe it's actually still off of cooldown. But yeah, unfortunately a disconnect happened and it kind of threw that whole fight off completely for Nomad Gaming. They were already behind from losing the first dragon. Now they're down about eight and a half or 8,000 gold pretty much exactly between the two teams. And so far it's just because they're down three turrets. They're down... Actually, I think the dragons are about even so far. Uh, I could be completely wrong on that. Or that was the first dragon of the game. I don't even know. I <laughs> it, it's getting late. It's a little bit tiring. But I do believe it is one for one in dragons. Don't quote me on that. I, I, I am pretty tired right now. And that's why the lobby is called Slouch is Tired. But, <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, a lot of just global gold all going over to Elite right now. The CS advantage. I mean, just look at the top lane advantage. 184 to 118. The mid lane uh, advantage to um, it was Norm. It isn't quite as big as that, but even that, on top of all the global gold that's gone to Elite recently, it's just so far ahead, keeping them way ahead of Nomad Gaming. It's going to be really hard for Nomad to come back if they keep losing the fights like this. Yeah, these fights are not going in their favor. They are using their ultimates really well, but just right now, Elite is just so much stronger than them at the point that they are able to out-damage. And with Cassidy and Miguel to kind of just jump into the back line, there isn't a whole lot we could they could do. Fad is being is using his EQ and Cataclysm to kind of jump into their into their back line. And so he leaves his own back line alone, and that lets that lets Elite's uh Elite's back line kind of jump into their back line and then assassinate all of their high priority targets. And especially with the Kasten right now, who I just know as a Void Staff against pretty much no magic resist on Nomad Gaming. There's a little bit in there. Pretty much the only magic resist built is currently on Norm with the Negatron Cloak, but he's just ripping through all the magic resist that they don't have with the Void Staff, with the Rod of Ages, and completely getting multi, multi kills in every single fight so far. And it's. Just one by one, taking out everyone on Nomad Gaming, one at a time. It's not even the team on the fight. We know Gambe is way ahead, but that's just because of his split pushing pressure. He hasn't actually been up to that top lane in a while. Uh, he went up there, and he, he, I mean, he came back to mid, they got the dragon, and he actually died trying to get away from uh, Norm's Ari. So, <laughs> yeah, he, he needs to get back up there, get the split push pressure, just like the game plan was. Bad actually finally getting out. Um, losing the auto attack ward there might have been a little sour. <laughs> I don't know, it was looking pretty close, man. You know, final final wasn't isn't exactly the strongest AD champion, so <laughs> <laughs> No, he does manage to back away. I do believe they actually let him go. Devastating charge was already procced on him, so it was forced to kinda hit him. It was really it was kinda like last second to turn it around. But I do think they let him get away from that just because it was kind of, it, it, yeah. He was in because a little bit of a sports. situation. Yeah, good sports. So it was a tricky situation, but it did walk away from that. But the team fight didn't quite end up quite in their favor now. They're about 9k down in gold. Okay, 1k down, down in gold. Uh, wait, no. No, 8k eight. down in gold. I, I'm way too tired. <laughs> eight, is decisively, eight is decisively more than one. <laughs> That's good enough for me. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah, again, Gambe back in the split pushing top lane. Uh, Squishy actually running over the mushrooms that now are Prelder Lizard burn on them. 
Again, I'm pretty sure that's actually not supposed to happen because Elder Lizard isn't supposed to proc with damage over time abilities, which is exactly what the Mushroom is. So, um, as long as that bug exists, I would imagine Gambay would not hesitate to continue to build it. And it, so far, it's obviously working out for him. It gives him a lot more map control. The extra dot on top of the dot he already has is just burning down people so quick when they step on those mushrooms. Yeah, absolutely. We actually see a lot of aggression moving up towards the top lane here. My directed camera is being really annoying right now. But, uh, you know, it looks like there's a lot of aggression hanging around near this topside jungle here. They do know that Vatishu is walking over ward. He is aware that uh, what's going on there. Meanwhile, Ganbe is still trying to be a nuisance. <laughs> to say yeah, the least. And he is. Oh, it's kind of being annoying, but now, oh He's my dead. goodness, <laughs> Hunter gets a little tiny bit out of position and then gets absolutely punished for it, and now Elite have switched their attention over to the Baron. Yeah, I was about to say, both supports have an Oracles, and Ponzer is going to have a field day with all these mushrooms that he finds, but uh, not going to happen. Nope, he's dead, and Baron's down to about a third health after it. Smite is not even available right now for Fad. He can't That's quite good. steal it. It just came off cooldown, and it does you go... You get this Smite steal, but the, con <laughs> the combination of ultimates is coming down now. Cassidy just cleaning up the fights here from the outside. Mm -hmm. Cataclysm was used, but just not enough damage coming out there. Just... Elite is so ahead by this point that they can just melt through the enemy team, regardless of what they're being thrown with, at, with them. Yeah, especially now with the Baron buff on them, that's going to be even easier for them to p at least push down this first tier inhibitor. Only Ponzer is available now to defend against it. The bubble on a few minions isn't going to do that much. He's trying to keep them off it, but there's not really anything he can do. He should probably just let this go, at least, uh, at least try to live and let the rest of his team come back up. So he's available to help support any counter push or de defensive uh, line they put up against and try to prevent them from pushing onto this Nexus. Right Chigurik actually like coming in here using that stone, but a huge amount of burst damage coming out. JWN actually getting cut out by the charm now, exhaust going down, and he will melt almost instantly now. So JWN has been shut down. Well, actually not shut down. I don't think he had a killing spree. No, he didn't, but he was dropped down now. So that is one dead carry that doesn't have the Baron buff any longer. It's an 8, 3, and 12 Corky right there. More mushrooms being popped. <laughs> Ponser Tank eating a lot of damage from that. The heal from Ebb and Flow is just as much as the damage that he took from the mushroom. And again, it's just like so many of those around that top side of the map. And Squishy is finding every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, so shrooms are being exceptionally annoying right now. Gambia doing a really good job with those placements, able to put them in key positions for when he gets chased, kind of makes it so that nobody can really do much to uh, chase him, I guess is the word to be using here. Whenever somebody comes into the lane, he just walks over those mushrooms, they get slowed. It's a 40% slow right now, so very strong slow, able to make sure that he can get away safely. Yeah, now he's back in the bot lane split, split pushing. I actually am a bit surprised at this because the second tier bot turret is already down. They're up about 12,000 gold after everything that happened. The inhibitors down, turrets were taking everything. But the second tier turret and top lane is still available for him if he wants to go and split push that instead. And it's interesting he's sticking in this bot lane. I mean, uh, Ali is obviously going to secure Dragon right here. I believe it's their second or third of the game by now. Obviously, don't quote me on that. I don't know exactly which one it is. But it's only 27 minutes. There's not a whole lot of... Dragon responses have even happened. That's the second in a row now for Elite, at least. And they're just looking to put as much pressure on the map as possible. And now I know why they, he didn't go top lane, because that they're trying to get the, a Baron push onto that bottom inhibitor turret, which not really anyone Nomad is available to contest. So many of them in that top jungle right now. And all the auto attackers are available to take down this bottom inhibitor turret for Elite. Yeah, a lot of wave clear coming out here from Nomad Gaming, though. They are able to kind of hold this turret out the best they can, but it doesn't really... They are kind of... No, they are being able to clear that out just fine, though. Looks like Elite is forced to back away from this. Yeah, they are, and pretty much... And they they at least have the wave clear to go against the Baron buffed team, and it's, it, it, that's something that they'll definitely need, especially... It's pretty much just the Kennen and the Ari that have it, though. All secret dicks damage is single target unless he wants to pop spray and pray to, to uh, spray and pray to clear a wave, which he's not going to do. At least not until three lanes of super minions are flooding the nexus turrets. But 
they at least had that inside Norm's already, but um, yeah, and it, it's enough. It, it keeps them off the inhibitor turrets. It prevents another one from going down, at least for now, and they'll just <coughs> at least keep that defensive line in place. Yeah, so they are doing a really good job of stopping these pushes from going down. Mid lane is being pressured again. Super minions going to be pressuring down towards the Nexus turrets. Now in the bot lane, final hunt pressuring down onto the bottom turret. So doing a good job of making sure the pressure is forced to be split up here. Nobody really looks like they're that interested in diving behind enemy lines here. Nobody really wants to go behind turret. Especially with slicing Maelstrom combo in with the Cataclysm. Regardless of the gold lead, it could really be devastating. But again, meanwhile, down there in that top lane, Ganbei just being a nuisance. Managing to split push again, getting another tower for free. Yeah, and notice every single super minion wave that comes in this mid lane, Elite is trying to get that into the base as fast as possible, just to continue that pressure on the Nexus turrets, along with their pressure on both bot and top lanes. Now a lot of Nomads running up to this top lane just to get rid of Ganbei, but at least not as many of them to defend bot lane. Final Hunt's caught by a charm, but... Not Final Hunt's actually going to... into the base here! JRR actually tr Valkyrieing in, actually, then you're using the force to flash away. Shadow of Onslaught's coming in now, Pwns are taking down very low. Secretic Force to try and run away or take it down extremely low. Will he be able to get away? Lift switches the skin of his seat. No, yeah, the Ignite does not quite finish him off. Cataclysm underneath the turret. Junkie is trapped there, nowhere to run. Voodoo is now trapped underneath the turret, taking a whole lot of damage. JD is trying his best to focus the target. Now switching over to tor turret angle to him. But meanwhile, Final Hunt actually managing to pick up a couple of tails, and they do manage to come out on top of that trade. Now in the top lane, Gambay taking out the top lane turret, and the bottom lane turret actually falling down at the same time. Inhibitors are going to be going down, and they might be trying to fix their eyes onto the Nexus. A um, super minion from mid lane actually roamed bottom to help push that inhibitor. Uh, no, the surrender vote has come out. That is game. Elite is your winners for this tournament. Congratulations to Elite Crew Reborn. In the Teemo plays, all the Teemo plays actually won the tournament. Everyone is a little bit surprised at that, but it is Ganbei who is the monster split pusher so far we've seen. GGWP Elite Crew takes week 7 of the League of Legends Amateur Open Tournament. Join us very soon. We will have a, um Elite versus Staff game now in just a few minutes. Yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.